check, check, check. Is this working? Hi, everyone. <laughs> How's it going? Nice to see all of you again. Really happy to be back for another episode of Tips and Tricks with Daltrick. That's me. <laughs> uh, I'm also Claire, uh, which is the name I go by when I'm teaching with 343 Labs. I keep my artist project kind of separate from my teaching stuff. But hi, welcome back to anyone who's watching again with us. Uh, greetings to... Oh, hi. Hi, Paul. Nice to see you again. Thanks so much for tuning in. Um, hi, Sonny. Cool. Sonny's on, on the 343 team also. And thank you, of course, to Thomas, who's helping us run the behind-the-scenes stuff um, with 343 TV2. Um, greetings also to uh, TWD. Welcome back as well. Hi to Scott as well in the chat. Yeah, nice to see everyone over here. Really happy to be back for um, another episode. And today I'm going to kind of do something that was um, introduced last week as a, a topic of interest when we were chatting between uh, you and you and me in the in the chat, um, we thought it might be cool to do something related to um, things like audio effects. Because we were talking about, last week we were talking about looping and performing um, a little bit. Um, but, ooh, yes. Hi, greetings. Hi, everyone. How's it going? Oh, from Portugal. Wonderful. Oh, thank you so much, ATS0624. I <laughs> really appreciate it. Yeah, we really enjoy doing these. I mean, 343 Labs, if, if you're joining us for the first time, if anyone who's watching this is um, seeing this for the first time, 343 Labs is a school that's based in Manhattan, and we run a lot of online programming at the moment with regards to learning different kinds of music software. So Ableton Live, um, Logic is also one that we do a lot. There will be a show for that on Wednesday. <laughs> um, but we also do other things like um, specific concept-based things like and skill-based um, topics like songwriting, uh, mixing, mastering, sound design, uh, things like that. And uh, my name is Daltrick. I'm, I also go by Claire as an instructor. I'm an Ableton certified trainer, um, and which basically means I've been cert certified by the company Ableton to teach live and push, which are their software and hardware respectively. So my tips and tricks show on uh, Mondays is is for kind of sharing any little tips that I've learned about live that I love to you know spread and and share a little bit as well. But uh, on that note, why don't, we wanted to talk a little bit today about some audio effects things. So I've actually pulled up a version of the project that I had last week with all of you. So let's do a little bit of um, a recap, maybe, for what exactly is being heard in this project, just to jog our memories a little bit. So here we go. Oh, yes, we were doing some house. We had some claps added. We had a very simple loop going. Some bass. And some chords. And we also had some loops of vocals. <laughs> Which we did some interesting things too and we kind of changed their pitches a lot. Um, but one thing that I, I brought up while um, I was I was kind of discussing a lot of looping and um, the idea of recording audio is audio processing and kind of what it means to have a chain of effects. I, I that's I feel like that's a term we often throw around a lot. It's like throw an effects rack on that or put a chain on that. Like what does it actually mean? Well, usually when people are referring to chains or racks, it's really short for um, you know a, a series of audio effects. For example, in this case, on my audio track that I have over here, we see three different devices at the bottom in device view. A device in live is any kind of instrument. It could also be an audio effect and it could also be a MIDI effect. So any time that you see any of these specific um, devices, that's what they are. They're, they, they'll fall into one of these categories and they'll transform the information that we're giving live in some way. For example, instruments will create some kind of audio based off of MIDI notes that you're hearing. If you have a MIDI effect, that's going to change the MIDI notes that you're actually having. So for example, a MIDI note would be any of these little notes that you're putting here into the MIDI editor in live. Um, and then, of course, the, the audio effects will change the audio of something after that particular instrument. But in this case, we wanted to talk about building FX racks. And oh, yes, cool. Nice to see some familiar faces. Hi again to uh, CHDB Music. Welcome. 
Oh, I, I think I, I might have welcomed you just now too. <laughs> uh, but Live Society, hi as well. Um, and hi also to the person who immediately disliked this video. I'm sorry that you didn't like this, but you're welcome to leave. <laughs> In any case, uh, excuse the sass, but no, it's, it's, it's reasonable, right? You don't like something, don't watch it. Um, but in, in the meantime, I hope everyone else is watching this and enjoying it though. Let's talk a little bit about audio effects racks. On my master track over here, um, some, someone also noticed this in one of my previous streams, but I tend to have um, a master effects rack that's loaded up and um, it's, it's in my default live set, which may or may not um, be something that maybe you do as well. Let us know in the chat if you're also used to putting up a default live set or a, a default kind of template that you use for your productions. Because um, it's, it's something interesting to do. Maybe we can also cover that a little bit next time. But you'll notice over here that I have this FX rack at the bottom of live over here. Um, and I've got a couple of things and they're labeled appropriately and they're called um, certain names and renamed. Hi, Max, how's it going? Max is our uh, co-founder at 343 Labs. Um, and we appreciate you tuning in all the way from Berlin, Max. 343 Labs now has a Berlin chapter, everyone. So if, if you're interested, in, if you're in Berlin and you want to learn from us, uh, feel free to get in touch with us for more of that too. But back to our FX racks over here. Uh, we've got, let's see what we've actually got. I'm gonna demo this by playing the entire loop that we had and I'm gonna change a couple, a couple of the effects that we have over here. So here we go. Hi, Max, yeah. Oh, also, yeah, uh, it's funny. Max, sorry if you came in right about when I was um, being sassy and everything. I was just being sassy to the person who disliked the video, who might still be watching, so good on you. But in any way, let's, uh, let's keep playing back all of this. Here we go. going to decrease this a little bit while I'm still talking over this, but what I'm going to do, cool, so a lot of people do use templates, awesome. Bilal, welcome back, great to, great to see you too. Um, so what I'm going to do, whoops. sorry, <laughs> what I'm going to do after this is increase the volume of this again, but while I'm doing that, I'm going to start moving around a couple of audio effects on my master track. And I'd love to um, see, if, see what your thoughts are. If you have any thoughts about certain effects, or maybe you have certain effects that you liked more and i'll go into detail and i'll explain each of these a little bit later but let us know in the chat if you hear something that you like so here we go let's increase the volume of all of these So let's take a quick pause over here. Um, I'm wondering if anyone wants to kind of shout out if they heard any specific kinds of effects. And I know there's going to be a little bit of a delay between me and, and the chat, so that's totally fine. Just going <laughs> to see if anyone managed to hear any kinds of interesting effects, which maybe you can also see, because I, I didn't write down the names of these, and which are hopefully a little bit descriptive in, in some way, shape, or form. So if it makes sense to you, then maybe you'll, you'll, see, you'll see all of that. Haha, <laughs> yes, Sassy Claire. I don't know, it's just funny. I'll, I'll just say this out now, and, and this is me being more of my Daltric side, because Daltric, like, I feel like she's a bit more open-minded with what she says, but, like, what kind of person goes into a stream and the first thing that they do is dislike the video? Like, I mean, I mean how much could you hate somebody with, with that, right? But that's okay. I mean, I've been doing this for years at this point. I just think it's kind of funny how judgmental people be. Uh, yes, thank you, Max. Fade to gray, absolutely. Fade to gray, there are some other kinds of effects, too. If anyone managed to catch anything. 
there was a fade to gray. I think one of my, my favorites personally was um, in the high pass and low pass filters. I feel like those are always classic kinds of examples. But if we take a listen to this again, oops, here we go. If you manage these correctly, you could even start getting like, you know, some kind of filtered sound, which maybe you'll start hearing on my voice now. So this is like a, it's a cool telephony kind of effect, right? And it makes it, does sound a little bit telephony. I could even put a little bit of distortion onto this. So now I'll really sound like I'm passing through one of those old kind of microphones that maybe is, um, this, they call it those Belmir mics, I think, or those older telephone mics as well. Yeah, totally. Those and, and um, fade to gray. Yes, delay. Hi, Becky. Welcome. Tree of the way. Hello. Nice to see you again. Okay, I'm going to stop this. <laughs> I'm going to make my voice hit back to normal. But yeah, absolutely. Then we also had delay and reverb, which are the two very popular space-related kinds of effects. So you've got reverb and delay. 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 And of course, fade to gray is, 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 is a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of... of, 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 of a combinational effect, and that comes from some other kinds of, of effects as well. But this is basically the a, a custom FX rack that I developed for myself. And I'd like to walk you through a similar process of creating your own FX racks. But for this, I'm going to need a little bit of your help as well. Yes, TWB, absolutely. Add a slight hiss, and, and it's going to be one of those like telephone sounds, maybe even some vinyl distortion. That would be a good effect to add in as well. But I'm going to need some of your help, um, everyone. So if you have a specific kind of audio effect in live that you like, uh, go ahead and throw that out into the chat. Maybe we can incorporate that in. Um, it could also be a, a generic name of an effect, like chorus. <laughs> Maybe that's a bit of a clue. Um, or it could be some other kind of thing that you find in the live library. Go ahead and take a look at all of these over here. Or if you know one off the top of the, your head, you can also kind of throw that back in. So just feel free to put that in the chat. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take your suggestions. That's why I need your help for, for this. And we'll create our own custom 343 TV um, type of, of rack for us. So going to wait a little bit for this too. And while I'm waiting for the suggestions, maybe I'll just mention that this rack that I created has consistently evolved over time. So I almost feel like FX racks are always some kind of work in progress. Cool. Tree of the Way mentioned delay. Cool. Let's, so let's do a delay. Um, we've got one effect. Cool. Scott, auto filter, limiter. Cool. Resonators. Interesting, a couple of different effects. Beat repeat, cool. So let's take a couple of these for now. That's a great start, everyone. What I like to do is start off with what Tree of the Way mentioned, which was delay. So let's do this right now. I'm going to uh, deactivate my audio effect rack. And in any device that you see in, in live, there's this little button on the top left that's a yellow button, and it's called the device activator button. So turning this on and off is going to either turn the effects rack off, it'll turn the effects rack on, and it turns any device on or off. So I'm going to turn this off. But before this, instead, I'm going to head over into the browser in live, and I'm going to pull over a delay device. So let's look for delay, which is under the audio effects category. So I'm going to click on delay and drag it over into... into, into, into. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit of fun for myself. Into the... <laughs> into the um, Rack into the um, master track that I'm seeing over here because we're currently doing like a master audio effects rack. One thing that you saw me do immediately to stop that delay from happening was play with a knob on the delay device. At the bottom right of the delay device, there's a knob that's called dry wet. So what I was doing is I was clicking on the dry wet knob and I was moving it up and down to kind of um, you know change the percentage of the effect. Usually if there's an effect that's wetter, that's going to mean that the um, effect, more of the effect is heard. If you have a dry effect, that means you're hearing more of the original sound. So you wouldn't really use dry effect, but you have like a wet noise, a wet sound being affected and dry being not affected. So just to demo this, I'm going to speak a little bit and move the dry wet knob. So here is very dry. Now here's more wet, 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 wet sound. And then here's more of the dry. So that's a little bit of how dry, wet works in this context. Now, if we want to build an FX rack, we're not just going to have one of these effects. We're going to have multiple effects. And I'll also preface this by saying there's many different ways of creating effects um, that there are audio effects. And 
and then a rack and put together. So I'm just going to show you one way of doing this. I think the beauty of life is that there's like 10,000 ways of doing the one thing. Uh, but I'm just, I'm just going to show you one of those <laughs> many, many ways of doing it. But the first thing that we want to do is put this into a group or an instrument rack. A really cool feature about Live is that whenever you initiate a group command on anything, so you want to group a bunch of effects together, that's going to automatically put them into an audio effects rack. So the way that we do this in Live is if you're on a PC, it's going to be Control G. And if you're on a Mac, it's going to be Command G. So I'm going to press Command G. And boom, what just happened? My delay kind of got encompassed or enclosed in something else, we can even see that right now this is an audio effect rack. The name's a little small, but we can of course expand this a little bit. And we can do this by clicking on the top button over here on the left. That's going to open up some macros. Now I know that from a couple people in the chat, you might have seen a few of these before. A macro is basically any kind of large knob that we think of that's going to help us control multiple multiple parameters if we so choose. For example, um, oftentimes when you're seeing live performers twist knobs, especially if it's on push or some other kind of controller, um, those knobs that they're twisting are more often than not mapped to some kind of macro or to some kind of parameter that changes the quality of the sound. So that's really what we mean when we're saying, okay, we're mapping something to a macro. We're using that macro to change something. I'm also going to turn on push because I realized I haven't got it on. But while I'm waiting for push to push to turn on, let's do a little bit of mapping. Oh, I think that was really quick. I think push is already connected. Is it? Maybe? Anyway, I'm going to show you how to map something to a macro. The fastest way to do this is to right click on any knob that you want to be able to control. So for example, this delay knob, it might be nice to have some delay, some delay, some delay. Some delay. on my voice and have that be a main type of um, you know, you know, yeah. effect <laughs> in this case. But what I all, all I all have to do is right click on this particular knob, and I get a, a drop down menu that lets me map this to a macro. And I'm, I don't think the context menu is going to show up um, in this case. Um, but but what basically happened now is I've mapped this delay to one of the macros on my audio effects rack. So now in the audio effect rack that you see over here, instead of it just saying um, macro one, I now have something that says dry, wet. And that's going to help me control the dry, wet knob on my delay. So if I clicked on this audio effect rack knob and I moved it, moved it, moved it, moved it. That's going to give me my delayed signal. I can also do this from push. So now I have push lit up. And now I'm not touching my computer keyboard, but I'm touching the knob on push and moving dry, wet, 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 dry. Well, so that's a little bit of how you do it. Ooh, TWD had a question. Is it required that the knobs also be scalding hot? Ooh, I'm not sure exactly what you mean, um, but I feel like a lot of the times, I'm not sure is, is if I feel like that might be a joke, but I'm not sure. <laughs> not doing so well with the sarcasm today, everyone, but if you want to, to let me know, uh, if to clarify that a little bit, TWD, go ahead. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really yeah, quickly how you do it. How you do it. And that said also, we can control some of the parameters even within this delay device. So right now we have this delay set up so that the delayed repetitions are coming in as 3 16th notes. So if we play this against some kind of uh, click, for example, I'm going to play the metronome back and we'll pay attention to how the delays are coming in. So here is everything with the metronome. So one, two, three. So it's kind of repeating at a bit of an irregular interval, but I, I quite like it. It's still synced up with the beat. We could, of course, change this to something of, say, a quarter note. So that's going to be one beat. So now our delays should be one beat off. And I'm changing this from the actual delay settings of this parameter itself. So boom, so, boom, so, boom, so, boom, so, boom. So. Now that's going to be in time with the click. One, one, one. one. Two, 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 three, 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 four, 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 four. Yeah, so so there we go. Oh, yes, totally, Tio. Uh, thank you. I, I was I was wondering if that was a joke because I have joked about it with my students before, but I didn't know if you meant something else too. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. DJs often like you know turn their hands off knobs also, um, and it's interesting. Um, I for me, I started doing that too, but I only actually started doing that when I used not knobs when I started using pads like push 
And I was, I was thinking about why I start doing this. And it's really so that I can see everything. I know it's, it seems a little bit weird. Um, but for me, I like being able to see my entire interface, especially if I'm playing something with pads. So then I would start doing these actions that are like, you know, pressing on something and then whipping your hand away. But that's really to kind of see everything. And then I was pleasantly surprised because I realized that um, Daedalus also does this. So I was like, hey, <laughs> I'm not completely crazy. And I love Daedalus and I love his, his performances and his music. Go check him out if you haven't seen him, everyone. He's a wonderful electronic music performer and producer. And he plays with a monum, which is a, a little bit different. But yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm not insane by doing like this weird kind of movement thing. So maybe that's, that's why also like I feel DJs, maybe they just want to see what they're doing. And also, if, technically, if you pull away from it fast, you won't have a chance of you know, knocking that out of the way, especially if it's an, an endless encoder. So, so yeah, something to consider. And one thing you might have also seen also from my FX rec over here, the one that's currently turned off, is I did manage to rename a lot of my parameters. So let's go ahead and be as tidy as we can. I'm going to rename this current dry wet knob something like delay. And that's really because whenever I'm, I'm having multiple effects, if I map all of their dry wet knobs, all of those are going to show up as dry wet. So it's going to be like eight versions of dry wet or, <laughs> or other variations of that too. So great, I have some kind of um, delay device that's currently in, in the works. So let's, let's leave that as that. Let's also recolor it. I'm going to right click on it and maybe let's make this, uh, let's make it some kind of uh, purpley color maybe. Yeah, delay, great. So let's move on to the second effect that we had. Scott Vincent showed us an auto filter. Let's, th let's take your first um, suggestion, Scott. And let's maybe add in a specific kind of auto filter. Let's do a low pass filter. So because of that, we'll be able to control voices a little bit of that. So usually when we're dealing with filters, everyone, we tend to think of filters as controlling the frequency spectrum of a sound. So if we have a filter that's closed or if a filter that's down, especially if it's a low pass filter, things will start to sound a little bit more muffled like this. So now my voice is more muffled. Sounds like it's passing through some kind of filter. Um, so we're moving what the, what's the filter frequency. So it's not a dry wet anymore, but it's this frequency knob over here. So now let's map this to our, let's map this um, a little bit more in an organized fashion though. So maybe let's do both a low pass filter and also a high pass filter. So what I'm going to do is make a, a duplicate of this filter. So I just pressed Command D, so now I have two filters. But I'm going to make one of them a high pass filter and one of them a low pass filter. Let's work on the low pass filter first. And in this case, maybe I'll map this low pass filter to the last macro so that it can kind of be like at the, at the end of my signal chain. And This way, if I do have some kind of delay, the delay also gets filtered. Check, 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 check. So that's a little bit of my process of deciding what comes behind which one. Of course, you could also have the filter before the delay, which might have some cool effects too. That really depends on your chain. For now, let's put it behind though. And what I like to do is rename this as well. So I'm going to rename my frequency. I'm going to call it low pass or LPF for low pass filter. So do, 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 we got it all. And up, great. Let's do the same thing for our second auto filter device that we have over here. But instead, let's make it a high pass filter. So if you check out this auto filter device, this audio effect, the way that we can control the different filters is through a couple of different options at the bottom of the effect. You can see these little shapes that are kind of hanging out. In, and if you click on any of these shapes, you will make them light up in yellow, at like so. So for a moment, for a second there, you couldn't really hear me. And that's because the, the high pass filter frequency was all the way up. So I was sounding like I was really filtered. And you couldn't really hear me. But if I lower this filter frequency, you can now hear how low I, I can go. <laughs> so that's another way to control that too. But we want to also make this, um, uh, we also want to make this attached to one of our macros. So let's map it to macro number seven. And if I head back over to my macros in my audio effect rack, boom, I have another control over here that I can now move directly from the macro. So now if I did the same thing that I did just now, I can get my kind of telephony sort of effect. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Great. So that's one way of working with these. And I'm going to rename this high pass filter 
just so I'm keeping track of stuff. Um, Bilal said, yes, it also also ensuring a deliberate release. Absolutely. And I think one thing that people forget about also is that, sure, we, we laugh at these people who are, you know, whipping their hands off um, knobs very quickly, but ultimately DJs are performers too. So there's a lot of performing and there's a lot of stage presence. That's something I try to, to teach a lot to my uh, electronic performance students also. Ultimately, people are there to watch you. Um, you can to there, It's totally possible to play an excellent DJ set, but look as if you're extremely bored. So there's that as well. You know, and, and I feel like for performers, we're always feeling it in our bones and feeling it in our bodies, and there's a lot of rhythm related to that. So yeah, moving around is, is really fun. So cool, we've got our delay, our high pass filter, and our low pass filter. I'm also gonna reorder that because maybe I want the high pass before the low pass, just to be organized. And let's also recolor these. So let's make this maybe blue and let's make the low pass some other kind of blue as well. So now we've got these three effects. We've got our delay, our delay, our delay, our delay. and our high pass, high pass, high pass, high pass and our low pass too. Low pass, low pass, low pass. So we're starting to get somewhere, great. Let's take a look at the other effects that we have. We had a resonator. Oh, resonator might be a little bit interesting. Let's see what we can do with it. So let's get a resonator and let's put it before the delay. So this is a little bit of a tip slash trick, <laughs> maybe. But oftentimes when I'm thinking about the order of effects that I want to have in, I'm always considering whether an effect um, changes the timbre of a sound or if it changes the space of a sound. So I, I try to categorize effects into different sections really. Um, timbre is a musical term that is, it's spelled a little bit differently from how it sounds. It's spelled as T-I-M-B-R-E. So some people do pronounce it as timbre. Um, but timbre is a term that we use to refer, or timbre also is another way of saying it. Um, that's a way that we use to refer to the quality of a sound. So for example, when I have a high pass filter on my voice, check, check, check. My voice is sounding tinnier. So because of that, the timbre of the sound has been changed. When I have a low pass filter on my voice, the timbre of my voice is more muffled. So again, timbre is being changed. With delay though, delay, 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 delay. What is delay? Delay is really just repetition. So in theory, we're not really changing any specific qualities of the sound, but we are adding additional repetitions to this. So because of that, I try to think of it as being more of a space type of sound. And that may affect the order that I put these sounds in. So in general, I try to, I try to think of like, what do I want to be affected first before another sound as well? Hi, Delirium. Nice to see you again. Welcome back to another stream. It's, it's like Thomas mentioned just now, Thomas from 343 Labs. It's so nice to see a couple of um, returning folks. Thanks so much for always joining us every week. We really appreciate all of you. Um, but back here, uh, we had a resonator from Live Society, as I remembered. And what we, let's see if we can just grab the default. Ooh, let's actually get, grab a preset. So one of my favorite presets, and maybe this also speaks to um, our 343 team in Berlin, especially Max, but I do like the Berlin Resonator. Let's see how it sounds on our master track. So I'm not sure if you're hearing that. But that's very cool. Basically what a resonator does, everybody, if, if, if it's your first time exploring this effect, is it kind of does what its name suggests. It makes the entire sound resonate with specific pitches or frequencies or notes. Um, and in this case, the Berlin resonator is, uh, is centered a lot around the note G and a lot of the chords associated with that. So check this out. Let's see if, let's, let's play this track back and see what happens when I adjust the dry wet knob. So let's play this back. Turn off the metronome. <laughs> so you kind of hear all of those like, you know, different frequencies come in, sounds a little bit more like everything's literally resonating with a certain chord. And that's what, we, that's what we really mean by resonance. I don't know if anyone remembers you know, the term resonance from filters. We even have them on, on our high pass and low pass. We can even check these out here. But for something to resonate means for a certain frequency to pop out a lot more compared to other frequencies. So in this case, that's what the resonator is doing. It's bringing out all of these additional frequencies and intervals compared to the original note that we wanted it to resonate with. But in this case, it might be cool to use Berlin, but have it resonate with whatever key we're in. So let's remind ourselves what key we're in for this particular track. I believe we are in the key of E. So let's see if we can get this resonator to start with 
the note E. I'm going to head over here, and I can control this from the resonator parameters. So now we should be all resonating with E. Let's see what happens when we bring in the resonator again. Here we go. It's kind of resonating with that E chord type of sound. So it could be an interesting effect as well. Yeah. Uh, ooh, Lie Society used that one a lot. That's great to hear. Yeah, I, th I feel like it's interesting because if you look at Resonator physically, I mean, visually, I mean, it has so many knobs that sometimes when I show it to people, it's almost like an automatic turn off because people are like, there's so many knobs. And I'm like, actually, you don't have to, first of all, you don't have to use all the knobs. You don't have to turn all of the knobs if you don't want to. Um, and it's, it's really just bite size. I think sometimes we get a little bit scared by things that we see visually. But ultimately, I feel like, and this is maybe a bit of my a tip or a trick as well, but I feel like the more we remember that we're really after sound and we're not after visual stuff, I feel like the more bold we get with a lot of music production, especially for in-the-box stuff. Like, for a lot of analog stuff, because something's physical, I feel like maybe there's a little bit less of a mental barrier for like, okay, let's turn a knob and see what it does. Versus visually, it's like, there's like so many knobs, like how, what do we click? How do we control X and X and, X and Y and, and Z and all of these things? So um, maybe that's a little bit of a tip. Like remember that ultimately we're in the game for sound. We're not really in the game for art or anything. Uh, although, you know, it, it is quite nice to see all of these knobs turned in a nice fashion. It's very visually, aesthetically pleasing. So <laughs> there's that too. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and move forward by mapping the dry wet knob of this um, resonator to uh, macro number two, let's do that over here. And now, from push or from whatever other controller you might have, you can control the resonator. So you can even hear this on my voice right now, which is um, Yeah, Tree of the Way mentioned, yeah, it sounds like the <laughs> Sasha remix of Hot Chips Foods. Yeah, totally. And Live Society, yeah, be, being a kid in the studio, that's so important. I think that's going to be like the main takeaway for everyone in the chat, maybe. It's like, be a kid in the studio. It's funny, right now, like I mentioned, at 343 Labs, we teach a lot of classes. We're also running a kids camp at the moment. And the kids are, I think, one thing that I, I love about working with the young people and working with a lot of young people, even though I seem young myself, I'm actually not, not super young, but a lot of the kids I work with are just so bold. They don't know anything, so they'll do everything, which is great. So yeah, be a kid in the studio, be bold, be, be unafraid to try new things. And in this case, be unafraid to resonate your voice. Ooh. Do, 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 do. See, that's pretty neat also. And if I, if I were singing, then this would end up being even, even cooler because more resonance in that too. <laughs> so you can also hear that as well. So be a kid in the studio. And to be, to be fair, I'll, I, I don't share this a lot with people because it's pretty personal, um, but that's also a little bit of why I have doll tricks separately because I feel like it brings me back a little bit to that uh, youthful mindset of just doing anything and being unafraid. So that's a little bit of the doll trick story, but for another time. <laughs> right now we're just doing tips and tricks. So, so let's head over here. Cool, we've got a dry wet. Let's also rename this and let's call it res, uh, res short for resonator because I'm not sure a resonator will, will fit in all the way. Maybe it will. Let's see. Resonate. Oh, no, it doesn't fit. It fits, like comes into a second line. So let's call it resin. And I'll also recolor this. Maybe color it some kind of green so that we can see it. Great. So now we have different sorts of effects. Let us jump into a very exciting effect that a couple of people brought in. And I'm glad that folks mentioned this. Uh, Max brought up beat repeat. I love using beat repeat. And I do often feel like it's sometimes... Um, uh, something that people get a little scared of too. So let's head back over into beat repeat. And let's, uh, I'm thinking about what order I'd like to keep this in. Yeah, let's let's do it after after the resonator, but before the delay. So now that I'm here and I've got beat repeat, one of the, the biggest things that comes up is I have beat repeat on my track, but it's not working. And that's usually because you need to turn the repeat button on. Once you've turned that repeat button on, you can repeat. If you don't turn the repeat button on, you will not repeat. So that's what, that's probably one of the biggest things about beat repeat. Sometimes we just forget to even turn repeat on. Um, and also because beat repeat is one of those similar, you know, to, to the resonator, there are just so many knobs that you can kind of turn. 
Um, and sometimes I sometimes I find that it's it's a lot to manage. There's so many different kinds of knobs and so many things. So maybe one thing I could even suggest as a tip is to keep info view open. We forget about info view sometimes and how useful it is, but I often have info view open. Info view is that bottom square on the live uh, on the left the bottom left of, of live everyone. Um, and it's this little box that you can kind of hide and show depending on how you want to um, see it. You can also use the question mark to kind of toggle it on and off to hide or show info view, but I usually like showing it, honestly. Anytime you have info view open and anytime you hover over a control, that is going, info view is going to tell you exactly what that control does. So for example, in this case, if I hover over the repeat button, info view immediately tells me activating this button will immediately capture material and play repetitive until repeat is again deactivated. So it tells you exactly what every knob does which I think is wonderful. Um, and I often feel that that's another little bit of a tip and a trick. Sometimes you really just need to RTFM and you just need to be open to receiving help from people. If you don't, <laughs> if you aren't open to that, you're not going to help yourself. So, so that's another trick. Um, but let's get back to this. If I, so now we know if I want this repeat button to kind of be turned on and off, then I need to have it mapped to some kind of macro two. So let's go ahead and map this to macro number three. Now this is where things get a little bit interesting. Different from all of the other things we've done so far, re this repeat button is instead some kind of button. It's not actually a knob, so it's not really variable on a percentage scale, like from zero to 100%, or from some kind of frequency to another frequency. Because of that, it's going to end up behaving a little bit differently. As an on and off button, something will only turn on if you're beyond the 50% mark. So I'm going to do this really slowly, everyone. But check out what happens when I'm moving the repeat knob, which I've since renamed to repeat so that we can um, you know, match up with that. Now I'm going to move the repeat knob slowly and check out what happens. I'm also going to keep speaking. So speaking, speaking, speaking. Is anything happening? 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 Cool. So you'll notice that because we had a button this time, we only got the repeat activated when the knob was beyond the 50% mark. Because 50% is like off or on. You've got this knob kind of turning from left to right. So that's something to consider also whenever you're mapping some kind of button to a macro. So any of these different kinds of buttons is going to affect the way that that behaves. You might have also noticed that just now when I was playing the, with the beat, beat repeat, so I'm, I'll just demonstrate this again. Demo. You can still hear my original voice but the beat is still repeating. So that's another consideration that you might want to have. And that's with the, the idea that beat repeat has different kinds of modes that you can explore in. If we head over to the right side of beat repeat, you'll see three different buttons, mix, ins, and gate. Mix is going to let you hear a little bit of the original sound and the repetition. So it's going to provide a mix between the two. Ins is going to make the beat repeat behave like an insert. So let's see how this sounds like. No repeats yet until... So if I try speaking, you're only going to still hear the repetitions. You're not going to hear my voice. So you're not going to hear any of that. I was trying to scream just now and be like, ah, but you couldn't hear any of that too. And then gate is a third mode. that lets you only hear the gated sound that's coming through. So you'll, you'll notice that the moment I switched to gate, you couldn't even hear me talk. So lots of different kinds of options. My personal favorite is mix, because I, I think it's pretty cool to hear a mix of the different types of sounds, because then you could do interesting things like, say, hold a specific note with resonator. So let's try this out a little bit. So a couple of interesting things happening right then and something to, to consider also. Um, you'll also notice that depending on how your settings for beat repeat are, the moment you have beat repeat on, it will also start repeating. So one thing that I like to do whenever I'm mapping beat repeat knobs is I also like to map on turning the device on and off. So you can also do this by mapping the device on and off button note. So, uh, so the device activator button is again going to be on the top left of the device. So I'm going to right click on this 
and I'm going to say map to repeat. Now, this one <laughs> knob <laughs> that I have, my third macro, I'll need to rename it again. I forgot about that just now. Whenever you remap something, it will often rename itself too. But now, whenever I have this beat repeat button, everything's going to both turn on and start repeating at the same time. So here we go. Speaking, speaking, speaking. And I'll do this against the track. So here we go. Here's our normal track. I'm speaking, speaking over the track until we speak over the track. So that's an example of how that will work. Cool. And of course, at any point in time, if you do have questions, feel free to let us know in the chat. For, there are many settings that you can change for beat repeat. From now, I'm going to leave this as this. I'm not sure if we can dive into all of these today, because I do want to make sure we cover a couple of our other effects that we were talking about. But maybe we can return to it later if anyone has questions. So there's usually people have a lot of questions about beat repeat. For now, though, I am going to color beat repeat purple, because I think purple is a neat color. And I like, like it, it, like it, like it, like it. Like it. Purple is one of my favorite colors, aside from um, chartreuse, if anyone knows what chartreuse is. <laughs> so I've got purple here. Um, and let's do the other effect that we had. I think Max had redux. Cool. So let's do some redux. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Redux is another one of those, I think, I feel like it's one of those lesser known devices also. I'll show you a little bit of what it does. I feel like it's more fun to show you exactly what Redux does. Um, but let's take a look at this. So Redux does a couple of different things to the timbre of a certain sound. And they usually have to do um, with changing the uh, crustiness of the sound, I like to call it. You're changing the number, the bit rate of, of this particular sound and also what it means to downsample a certain sound. So let's take a little bit of a listen to this. I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to move one of these knobs a little bit. And that, yeah, let's actually use the downsampling knob in this case instead. So check out what happens when I'm speaking, 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 and I'm downsampling my voice. Ah! <laughs> so we want to, again, be careful with Redux because it can potentially be very um, loud as well. So you do want to be a little bit careful with that. So usually whenever I'm using Redux, I tend to go with soft downsampling. And that's what happens when you toggle this um, particular button over here. It's a button that is by default hard, but if you click on that button, it'll become soft. So downsampling mode is now soft. It's a little bit more gentle on the voice. So I do I do quite like that. And it can actually work very nicely with delay. Because delay, 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 you can get some can get cool, some, get some, cool get robot cool. type things. Um, very much, uh, very similar to a lot of craft work things, really. So, so let's do this downsample knob a bit. Yeah. Uh, uh. And I'll show you another trick with this downsample knob. So let's uh, map this downsample knob to um, macro number four. And yeah, let's, let's just leave this as, as sample soft, because I think that's a good description of what this, this really is. That said, though, downsampling, hmm, it sounds nice. But oftentimes, for me personally, I, I don't like to have the knob be able to go all the way up, just because I think it could potentially get a little bit uh, crazy when you have a lot of effects on. And you also do want to protect your ears. That's one. Also, a, not a tip or a trick, but maybe a reminder. You only have one set of ears, everyone, so please try to protect them. In this case, though, I want to be able to control the maximum value of my down, downsampling knob. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to map. Also, there's a little bit of, of the effect coming in. So, so maybe what I'll do is I'll map this specific um, device and control its mapping ranges a little bit more. So if you look at this audio effect, everybody, right next to the name of the audio effect rack that's called audio effect rack, there's a tiny word that's called map. So what I'm going to do right now is click on the map word, and it's going to pull up for me the mapping uh, macro mappings options. And that's going to show up in the same place that you usually see the browser in, or it's also going to show up in the um, same place that you'll see MIDI mapping options and uh, key mapping options. But here, we control the, can control, uh, control, goodness, we can control the ranges of any of these knobs that we have. So for example, with sample soft, I can say, okay, I want the maximum value of this knob to be 10, which I think just now is a pretty good maximum range. And now, my maximum, when I, where I turn the knob all the way up, is going to be 10 for downsampling. So I can't go up to 20, even though I, I 
theoretically can in the Redux device itself. So when I exit mapping mode and I'm going to click on the word map again, now the map word is lit up in green, I'm going to click on map again to exit that. Now when I play with the down sampling button, and I'm going to do it from push this time, now my maximum is 10. So 10 is the absolute cap that I can go to when I'm playing with the downsampling device. So that's something to, to consider as well. Another thing you might have noticed, which I didn't cover before, but maybe we see it very clearly now since these two are in such close proximity, is that I can no longer move the downsample knob directly from the uh, Redux device. And that's because whenever you've mapped anything to a macro, that macro is going to take precedence for control. So you can only control it from the macro. And Live will also tell you this. So for example, right now on the lower left-hand um, side of Live, we see this red bar pop up that says, this parameter is controlled by the macro control sample soft of the enclosing rack. So that's just a quick reminder that the moment you map any of these controls, they can only be directly controlled from the overall macros. But now we can do things in combination, right? So if I have a bunch of knobs uh, with me on Live, I can do things like this and Change, change, change a little change, bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of how I sound. And do effects and like do that. Effects that could like be that. really good for transitions too. So that's a little bit of, of what it means. Now I have two more macros over here, so I'm wondering if anyone has two more suggestions that they have for for cool effects. Well, or maybe one more suggestion. While I'm while I'm waiting for that one more suggestion, feel free to drop it into the chat, everyone. We'd love to hear from all of you. Uh, while I'm waiting for that one more suggestion, I'm gonna maybe do one of my um, personal favorites, and that is uh, reverb. I love I love putting reverb in, and I think it's almost one of those. Um, maybe it's it's slight. I don't know. I, I I'm I was almost gonna say that reverb is overused, but I feel like we only refer to something as overused if it's been used too much. But I feel like you can never have like too much reverb in, in in any kind of special effects that you're using. So I'm gonna go ahead and put reverb on here. And let's put reverb after the delay. So one thing I'm going to do now with all of these other, other devices that I've um, finished um, editing and manipulating is I'm going to close them up. And I can do that by double clicking on each of their names. And they're all just going to collapse really neatly into a, a singular like, line of all of these effects. So let's put the reverb behind the delay. Great. So now we'll also have a dry wet knob that we can map. But before I map the dry wet knob, I want to uh, tweak a couple of the parameters on this reverb. So I want to make this have a longer decay time. So long decay time. And maybe a little bit more pre-delay too. So this way, if I ever did a reverb throw, it would be like la 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 la. So we have a bit of a longer reverb. Great, so now I can go ahead and map this to macro number six. And now I can rename this macro reverb. Ah, before I do that though, I'd like to show you another thing. And that is on reverb, there's a really unique kind of feature that's called freeze. And if you've ever heard of anyone talk about freeze reverbs before or, um, or like frozen reverbs, that's really what it is. And it basically means that you're taking the reverberated signal and the, the diffused sound of the reverb is going to be held. So you're going to keep hearing that. I'm, I'm going to illustrate that a little bit. So here is the reverb. And let's turn on freeze. And then when you click on freeze, everything will turn off. So I'd like to do that too, but this, in this case, uh, you'll notice freeze is also one of those buttons. Instead of um, making everything freeze like halfway through, because if I, if I map freeze to, let's see what happens, I'll, I'll explain this before. Let's see, map freeze to the same macro that had the reverb. Now, let's see what happens if I, if I click on this reverb. Speaking, 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 speaking. Ah. So if you remember, any time that you have a button in live and you map it in, in your audio effect rack, any time you get past the 50% mark or the halfway mark, that button is going to go into effect. So if we only wanted this freeze to, to come in at the end, though, maybe we want this to be a kind of like a, we'll freeze everything at like 100% of this, we would then have to edit this in the macro settings. Before I do that, I'm going to make sure I rename this macro so that I stay organized. So I'm going to rename this 
and call it a reverb. Oh, re reverb, if I can spell correctly, reverb. And then I'm going to head back into that macros menu. So let's head over to map. Let's open this up. And now for my freeze on, you'll notice that the values I'm having are 64 all the way to 127. This is on the top left-hand corner, everyone. Again, I know it might be a little hard to follow, but we're in the mappings menu. And I have an option that says freeze on. Right now, I just clicked on it, and it's highlighted. And we see that the minimum is 64, and the max is 127. That's because generally, when we're dealing with MIDI, we have a, a, a range of 0 to 127. That's the range of values. It's a long story behind that that has to do with binary, which maybe we'll go into in like a different stream. But in this particular case, I want to make sure um, that if my reverb's only coming in at the end, maybe I only want it to kick in when the values are 126 and 127. So that means only when I'm turning all the way up. So let's exit mapping mode, and let's see if this holds true. Here we go. So reverb, reverb, reverb. Reverb, reverb. Not, fro not frozen yet until, until the end. So that's exactly what, what we can do with that. Great, so now I'm happy with that. And I can color my reverb a different color. But what I might also do is just continue to fine tune this a little bit. I, think, I do think I want the decay on this a little bit less. And maybe I want a little bit more chorusing on this reverb. And I'm also going to take away a couple more highs, because we did get a lot of, of high frequency stuff just now, that, that especially when the, the diffuse signal got frozen. So let's test this out again. Check. Maybe longer decay time. Just a little bit longer. Maybe like three seconds. And that's cool. And then the great thing about this is, is that then you can also still put a high pass filter and a, a low pass filter on the reverb too. So if like my reverb was here, I can still high pass and low pass my boy, and it's still reverberating. So that's kind of why I chose to put the reverb before the two auto filters that we had over here too. Now, one thing that, that people sometimes forget also is that we can save our FX racks. So since I didn't get any other suggestions for, the, for any other audio effects, that's totally cool. But let's see if we can save this. So the first thing I want to do is rename this audio effect rack. And I can do that by pressing Command R. And let's just call this the uh, 343 TV uh, FX rack, uh, 343 TV rack. Now, once I've done this, uh, a couple of things. When I save this project, which I'll do now, and live will, will do its thing. When I've saved this project, my rack will be saved with the project. But I can also, if I wanted to, save this to my live library. And maybe that's more useful to me, because that way, I don't always have to have this project open in order to use this rack. I can save it into my library, and I can kind of call upon it whenever I want to. So I'm going to save this right now. And I can do that by clicking on this little floppy disk icon that's next to the map Word And it's funny that we still associate saving with floppy disk because I'm not sure if... I think the last time I, I used a floppy disk was like in, in high school or something or in, in middle school. Um, but yeah, still we, we save with the floppy disk icon that's going to be to the right of the map icon. There's a little circular button, but to the right of that again, it's going to be a floppy disk icon, which is to save the preset. And when I click on this, I have options to then save this into my live library. So we can see right now, it's over here. It's in my own user library. And now anytime I want to pull that up, I can do so. I can click and drag this over here even to just illustrate that. Now I have two of the 343 TV rack. But I'm going to delete the first one. And I'm going to pull this over here. So now, from push, just as a final quick demo, here we go. Let's, let's play with a couple of these. So that's a little bit of our 
<laughs> Sometimes you forget that too. Like uh, I, I do this very often where I finish like a performance and then I'm like, I end with a reverb or something and it sounds cool and then it's like, ooh, whoops, I still have the reverb on me. But yeah, absolutely. That was a little bit of insight into how to create an audio effect rack in live. Uh, so thanks so much, everyone, for tuning in. Just wanted to wrap up right now, and I'm going to head back over into the chat. Looks like we didn't have any co other comments coming in, but I hope everyone is still following along. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Really appreciate it. And please tune in again tomorrow for Techno Tuesday if you'd like to catch up with a little bit of Selway and his amazing techno creations. And for this week only, uh, I will be also back for Wednesday. I'll be doing The Logic Show, which is our new series where we talk about things related to logic as well. Um, I love using Logic. It's also one of my, my DAWs that I thoroughly enjoy. And maybe I'll speak a little bit about um, the new features in Logic, because I, I know that Justin's been talking a little bit about that too. He's the usual Logic host. Um, but it might be nice to maybe talk about some of the newer things, and maybe we might even draw a couple of relationships between the new Logic and live. <laughs> or Bitwig. Bitwig also has some things in common with the new Logics. <laughs> There's a lot of thoughts to consider about that. We're not going to dive too deep into this now, but I would love to talk about it on Wednesday. So thanks so much, everyone, for tuning in. Once again, this has been 343 TV. This has been Claire or Daltrick or <laughs> really more, more of Claire. But thanks so much for tuning in, everyone. Uh, please head over to the 343 Labs website if you're interested in any of our course offerings, especially because we have some intensives that are going on and that are also coming up. Um, otherwise, until next time, see you around, everyone, and have a great day. Bye. Thank you. I could choose to stand my ground Thick or thin, black or white, day and night We're safe and sound Play the game, play it cool By the rules we dare not break You could stay, but I say I'm awake I live my way hey.